Welcome to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Cindy Fleck, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Equipment Finance at Channel Partners, and Christy Schoen, VP of Marketing at Channel Partners. Thanks for joining me, ladies. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Oh. <laughs> You'd think so we practiced that. No, absolutely. And it's a little bell for how many like dittos that we got here. So um, <laughs> if, if you don't mind, I'll start off with, with you, Cindy. Just kind of, uh, you know, inter introduce yourself and your career to date in equipment finance. Absolutely. Um, Cindy Fleck, again, um, Senior Vice President of um, Channel's Equipment Finance Division. I've spent almost 32 years in the industry, which is really wow. weird considering I tell my kids I'm only 32 years old. Um, but I've started with Manifest back in 1990 and spent 19 years um, with Manifest, working in everything from credit underwriting to managing the um, credit team. And then Brad Peterson actually recruited me over to sales. I think he felt like I was the, the sales prevention in credit. So he had to move me to the other side. But um, but I joined the sales team in 1998 and um, spent a few years as a regional sales manager, became the director of marketing, not even a quarter of the, the skills and talent that Christy has in marketing, but I, I did my job there for a couple of years. And then I went back on the, the sales side at Manifest and was the director of sales managing the, the West Coast, the Western half of the United States. Um, and then in 2019, 2009 rather, um, Brad recruited me to come to Channel and help him launch the Working Capital product. Um, so we launched Channel in 2009 as a Working Capital product. And then I spent uh, 15 months helping get this set up and established. I was not a big fan of the, the product at that time, but the product's changed tremendously over the last 13 years. Um, but so I left and went to Great America uh, based out of Cedar Rapids, Great America Financial and spent 10 years helping them launch their um, specialty markets division. Uh, Great America was a copier focused industry or funding source and wanted to get into other industries. So along with Brian Biella and myself, we launched the specialty markets group and got that division or that company into a lot of different industries. Um, and then I resigned from there in 2000 and 19, and then had an opportunity to join channel again in an effort to launch the equipment finance division. So that's kind of been my, my tour in the industry. So now were you always, um, so obviously manifest up in Marshall, right? Great America has Joe Andrews group up there, right? Yes. Were you yep. just a big fan of companies in Marshall or did you just like, <laughs> just a thought out, you know, thinking out loud you, here? You know, it was, I did not grow up wanting to live in Marshall or be in the finance industry, but, um, <laughs> Fair enough. Fair but enough. it's, um, I, I was actually grew up in South Dakota and okay. um, went to college in Marshall. It's a small state school there and only 85 miles from home and went to a small school there. And my husband and I said, the day we graduate, we are leaving town. Well, we, we were very fortunate to both have um, careers that we loved. He was a school teacher in town and, um, and I, had loved my job. We were actually part of Schwann Sales Enterprises, the frozen food company, and um, nobody understood what we did. And it was a bunch of really young kids doing a ton of business. And um, and we had a blast. It was a great group of people. And, and Joe Andrews actually is the one that hired me. I did an internship for Joe, and then he hired me on as a credit um, analyst. And so, yes, and then um, Great America set up an office in Marshall. So I joined them. And then we um, had the headquarters in Cedar Rapids. So I would go to Cedar Rapids um, once a quarter or so. And then my husband and I moved to Wyza, or not Wyza, to Waconia um, uh, 10 years ago. And so now I've been up closer to the Minneapolis area. I left Marshall in 2012. So perfect. I've had Great America as a customer. I want to say they were my third ever customer in equipment finance. I didn't so, know. So um, it was like 2007. So okay. a little while ago, but uh, a great organization. I think they have a personality profile that they give all candidates that I'm assuming that I probably would not pass. So whatever, <laughs> um, so re re regardless. <laughs> they, they do. It, it, it's pretty, they're very disciplined in who they hire and you go through this testing and I probably shouldn't share this, but I'm a candid person. And um, because I was part of Brian Biella, they actually bought his 
company Quest, and I came in as part of Brian's family, and none of us had to get tested. So we kind of mm -hmm. snuck in under the radar, <laughs> but I but I think we fit really well. It was a great, great culture, great organization. So still Perfect. friends with lots of folks there today. So. Well, thank you for that, Cindy. And yeah. uh, Christy, do you mind just giving us your background? Yeah. Um, all of this experience between the two of you and of course in, you know, in equipment finance and I actually spent 20 years in agency life um, traditional marketing and advertising world working a lot of retail and consumer packaged goods so think you know Nestle and Hormel Foods and all sorts of kind of big brands that you've probably heard of so um, kind of sparked my interest as I was just kind of looking for something different 20 years is a long time in in that space and I uh, came across this opportunity that felt like I was fueling the, the small business, middle-sized businesses of the world after working for years with, you know, global, global retail. So kind of started to dabble in what was going on over here at Channel and loved the people and the leadership and what they were all about. Um, luckily, an opportunity that fit, and it's been a wild 12-month ride. I started here uh, January of 2021. So just hit the year mark. And I feel like we've done so much in that amount of time, but we're just, you know, continuously, it feels like a rocket ship and hold on. And we've got a ton ahead of us. So um, it's been really exciting. It's been great to be part of associations and, you know, meet other people in the industry. And um, it's just been a really welcoming group. It's this kind of secret that I think, um, you know, the equipment finance world is not something everybody's maybe aware of, but I'm, I'm planning to tell everybody about it because they should be here. So no, and that, and that's perfect foresight by you, Cindy and, and Brad and Adam to, to hire on Christy, because what you'll see in this industry is you're like, what do you do for marketing? And the <laughs> website might be like 25 years old. So it's just like a lot of these people don't have a clue. So good for you guys um, in making that uh, hire. I encourage you to watch for, for her stuff. It's been 12, I can't believe it's only been 12 months because honestly, I don't think there's anyone I've worked with who's come in and had such an amazing impact on an organization um, so quickly and, and to come in and not know the industry, right? I mean, just to, to try to figure out what we're doing first and foremost, and then to, to start marketing it. So it's been a great addition to our team for sure. Yeah, and I know I'm going to ask her some questions in regards to that process, especially coming in in the middle of a pandemic. But I'll I'll wait. I'll I'll try to be patient as much as I possibly can. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for Cindy, the people that might not be familiar with Channel Partners, do you mind just giving a little background on the organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned, Brad launched it in 20, 2009, um, and my sister-in-law actually is the director of an um, office administration here. Um, her and Brad have worked together for a long time. And so Brad and Jill, myself, and, and Adam Peterson launched the company in 2009. And we were calling on third-party brokers, just like we did at Manifest, but bringing really a new product to them that they could offer. And at that time, we were just saying, send us your declines, right? If there's someone you declined, send us your bad credits. We'll call them. No. We'll see if they want some working capital and, and offer that. Um, so it was really referrals of declines to us um, when I was here. And again, it was a, more of a merchant cash advance product that I always tell everyone it was the hardest job I ever had because you got to get people to change their credit card processing and pay high interest rates and daily payments. And, and it, it was a challenge. But um, And that's why I, I wanted to stay in equipment finance. So that's why I left. But Brad and um, Jill and um, Charlotte Laird came and was with us for some time, too. And, um, and then they hired people. And then the thing that's amazing is just how the product has evolved, right? And the, the whole um, relationship we have with our partners has evolved over the years. And now the product is, it's true working capital. It's, um, you make monthly payments. There's no credit card processing. We do offer some weekly payments, but I'd say 70% of our business is actually monthly payments. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's it's evolved a lot. The pricing structure is very different. We go up to 250 app only in the working capital and um, go out as long as you know 18 months. So again, huge evolution in that that product offering. And then in August of um, 2020, we launched the equipment finance, and we had about five partners that were 
very um, patient with us and willing to work with us as we launched and learn some things and test our processes and all that. And then we did more of a formal launch in January of 2021. Um, and the support and interest in us has been just, it's been humbling. The, the people that are willing to give us a shot at their business. Um, we've learned a lot. We, we were, um, we're not naive. We knew we'd have to make some tweaks along the way. And, and again, the, the last 18 months, I think we've grown a lot as an organization. And, and we've got over 100 partners now partnering with us and sending us business um, for equipment finance and working capital. And we have some that do both products and we have some that just do working capital and we have some that just want to do equipment finance. So we're happy to work with any of them. And as far as number of employees and locations, I know I just... Yeah, it's um, crazy. We now have four locations. We're in no. location, yeah. Kennesaw, Georgia, Des Moines, Iowa, Marshall, Minnesota, and um, here in Minnetonka. So with just about a hundred employees. So wow, mm -hmm. that's impressive. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say I think I was at that office like four years ago, four or five years ago, and there wasn't that many people. So <laughs> yeah, companies definitely no, we evolved. Are so, yeah, 20, about 25 during the pandemic, pandemic, when we were all at home, we brought on 25 new employees um, who had never set foot in the office. And so it was good to get back to the office and, and bring everyone together. Well, that goes to my next question. I was going to ask Christy. So they launched this new equipment finance. Obviously, they had the relationships and some of the experience there. But what were your thoughts when you came on board and you're like, OK, I'm doing what? I'm rebranding how and what are we doing? Um, yeah, I think, you know, in general, just trying to learn the industry first and kind of figure out how we all, you know, talk to each other and share, you know, what our, our point of difference and how we can benefit or, or, you know, have mutual success together with different partners. Um, once I kind of felt like I had a handle on what we do here, <laughs> that was kind of first and foremost, we really just took a lot of time to assess the marketplace and start to think about what are the messages that are being put out there and you know how does that is that same or different than what we at channel were saying um and you know what we kind of learned was you know fast and easy and some of the things that you know you might see pretty frequently in our space um are important they you know they're they're what we need to deliver to you know for our partners and ultimately to their their customers but we also wanted to make sure that we could that was almost table stakes and then what are the ways that we can actually be a really invaluable partner? Um, how do we say that? And how do we say that with impact and make it memorable um, and stand behind, you know, what we mean as, as, you know, from a branding perspective. So luckily took our entire senior leadership team together and kind of shared what, what we had observed um, as, as marketers and, you know, our perspective. And they've all just been very willing to hear us out and, and take our opinions and, and give us pretty good free reign, I guess. Um, I think it's like feedback. <laughs> I mean, even Brad, who, of course, you know, has started the company, whenever you go to someone who started a company and say, I think we should change a lot of things, you know, that can be a little bit of a nerve wracking conversation, but he, he's been a great partner as well um, in that whole endeavor. And so we sat down as a team and went through, you know, eight different strategy sessions, really tried to make sure that we thought, you know, intently about how we want to speak to our partners and tell them, um, you know, what we can mean to their business and, and that relationship. And so I think, you know, it's really been a year um, from there of what does that look like and how do we say it in earnest and authentically so that it's, you know, not only believable, but memorable, um, you know, and we continue to make that effort. So, and to Cindy's point too, you know, so long in the industry, really offering one particular product and now we've expanded so much, you know, how do we tell that much bigger scaled story succinctly? Um, and so that's really what we've been working on and, and hopefully, so far, it feels like it's resonating pretty well. People are starting to get the hang of, who, of what we're saying about ourselves and how we refer to the business that we can provide them. Um, so we'll just keep going. But And then we're just going to logo everything constantly. <laughs> we're really fun. I think when, um, when, doubt, Brad was, when Brad was giving kind of, I think you guys sponsored one of the speakers at the Charlotte NIFA event. 
and Brad got up there with like five different like channel logos. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, oh, look at this. We got this one, we got that one. So I'm like, all right, keep going. I remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered it very well. Yeah, we should have. Brad will, Brad will be ashamed. <laughs> Brad will be ashamed that there's no logo behind us. But yeah. I will see what I can do, but I don't know if I'm that talented. So I'll, I, I can try. Uh, but but thank you for that. So you guys basically quadrupled employees over the last couple of years. Now, yes. was your office open? Were you an essential business? Were you guys all working from? I'm just trying to think from that culture perspective because I, I've known your leadership for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Um, but how is that with those new employees, like trying to bring them in? Because you guys have a very tight culture. Yes. It's, um, that, that's, I think it's been a great success story. We, we all went home um, being owned by Elliot I think they're pretty well connected to what's going on around the world, right? And, and so we had some pretty good foresight of what was coming. Um, and they gave us the heads up to buy the computers, get the monitors, be ready. So I think it was March 9th or March 16th when we decided to send people home. We had full workstations ready to go and everybody walked out with docking stations, computers and um, and everything. So it was pretty remarkable how quickly they were set up and, and working. Um, and then we actually brought everyone back June 14th of 2021. And we, we kind of had the office open last, um, you know, actually it was probably August of, I'm confused on my years now, of 19, where people were kind of in and out, you know, as they were comfortable. But on yeah. June 14th of last year, we asked everyone to come back full time in the office. And um, and Brad said, you know, we want to get to know our coworkers because we hired so many people that never, we never got to meet. I mean, we do things over teams and, and all yeah. that, but it's, it's not the same. And, and so Christy and team did a great job of organizing some events. Um, we got some furniture from Ikea and had furniture building contests that we, <laughs> we donated to the women's shelter in town and, you know, okay. and, and try to do some good with it. And, and I think that was fantastic and did the food trucks and, and different things. Um, but I, I think that's a real testament, Jesse, to our culture is, you know, the team came back and, and we were back for six weeks. And then we kind of checked in and thanked everyone. And we said, okay, we're going to give you four um, remote days. You can work from home four days, four days a month. Um, you pick okay. and choose when you want, if you need it, whatever. And, um, and then we did that for like another 12 weeks. And when we looked back, 85% of our employees had used less than 50% of their float days or their work from home days, right? Oh, okay. And, and so to me, that says our people want to be here, right? I mean, yeah. they have these days they can use and they can work remote if they want to or need to, but they're choosing to show up almost every day, you know? So so it's been great. And, and again, I think um, we're want the work-life balance and want to treat people fairly and we know they'll treat our customers fairly if we take care of them and and I think it's worked out really well yeah anything to add yeah I just think that the the collaboration that happens in the office you start to get that energy and um, I mean you can feel it the moment you walk in in the morning till you're leaving in the night you know it's it's really a great um, connected family feel being a newcomer um, and coming from a really large company before this to be able to experience this really close knit um, group that, you know, whether I was joining it, you know, more remotely or then now, of course, we're, we're almost for the most part here in the office. Um, and even with our remote offices, they do the same thing. They get together, they're in the office because um, we're really just, we like to be together, I guess. So. <laughs> No, I think that's a that's a good message across the industry because I think it's almost like a tight knit family. Mm -hmm. So, but it starts off with cultures like that. And that was gonna be my question, Cindy, in regards to did you have any pushback from individuals who were like, nah, you know what? Maybe they had some young kids at home that they, it was a better balance for them to be at home than it was to come to the office. So, but yeah, I think you just already answered that question for me. <laughs> you know, and we there were a couple of folks that were really not happy about coming back and we were concerned you know and um I think it was maybe after two to three weeks being back I ran into one of them in the hall and and she's like I cannot believe how great it is to be back I mean I think they kind of forgot right you kind of got used to 
rolling out of bed in your sweats and <laughs> going to work. And, and then once I got back in the routine, I think it's like, wow, I really miss this. And, and yes, I can do my job at home and do it successfully um, because everyone did. They were amazing people. And, um, but yet I think there's value. So I, I'm hoping that channel's giving them a little bit of both, right? And, and we talked a lot as a senior leadership team about do we work from home on Tuesdays or Fridays or, you know, what's the day? And, and at the end, I think people want to choose, you know, if I have a baseball game on a Thursday, I might want to work from home so I can scoot right to the game, you know, but give people the flexibility they need to manage the home life and the work life. So, yeah. See, I've been working from my house uh, since 2010. So yeah. it was not foreign to me, the concept of it being in sales. Um, However, not being able to travel for the last 24 months was kind of like, okay, what am I doing here? This is kind of crazy. <laughs> so I was, I was used to working from home. Um, and then throughout the last 18, 24 months, was reaching out to people that weren't in a good spot when they had to go back to the office because they didn't want to go. Yeah. So just offering them where it's like, hey, if that doesn't work out, we got a place for you because I want to say over the next six months, we will be completely virtual as an organization wow. and we're 21 years old now so wow but it's it's different. been it's been great to see what you you can work anywhere i mean you really yeah. can and and do a good job and get your job done and so but now on the other side i always like to pick people's brains where it's like okay so how do you a majority of the people that we're bringing on now so we added 10 people last year so we're up to we went from 45 to 55 but I knew those 10 people, <laughs> right? It's how do you get that next generation of talent to come on board and create that culture from a virtual office? Not really applicable to you guys, but maybe for some of the satellite offices. So it's yeah. something I always ask. I just talked to a young lady um, this weekend. I ran into her at the mall and she's a gra graduating senior this year. And she's been offered a couple of jobs, but they're remote. And she's like, I don't want remote. I want to go to an office and meet the people and, and be yeah. a part of something. So I think um, it'll be interesting to see what that generation ultimately yeah, chooses, sure. you know, because I kind of expected they just work from home. But in a lot of them, we have some young guys that had five roommates. <laughs> they don't want to work from home. They can't work from home. <laughs> no, no, no. Five roommates, five kids. Let's go to an office. Exactly. <laughs> I, need break. I need a break. Yep. Um, all right. Well, I want to just pivot this conversation a little bit. So, um, and Christy, you might have a different perspective, but Cindy, 32 years. So you've been in equipment finance for a little bit since you're 35, right? Started when you were three. <laughs> yes. um, let's talk about like the women in leasing and how women are now advancing. I think the monitor's done a great job over the last three years with their top women in leasing. And were you the first year or were you I was recently. second year. Yep. Second year. Second year. So that designation and what that meant to you and just kind of what you see the industry from an evolution perspective, just kind of want to get your thoughts on that. Well, and when you had mentioned that topic to me, um, Jesse, I actually went back and started looking through some old pictures from like the nineties and, and there were a couple of, um, sales incentive trips that we did with our partners back in the manifest days where we went to, um, I'm going to, the Robert, Gen, Robert Trent Jones trail golfing um, okay. for, for several days. And I was the only woman with uh, 30 men. We were, and I don't golf. So, so <laughs> <laughs> they were all very kind and very patient. And um, I joked earlier that I've always been one of the guys, but I, I felt that way because it was, there was, I wasn't exposed to a lot of women in the industry back then. And, um, and then we did Sun River one year and I was counting, there were 27 men and me um, there. But over the years that has changed, you know, dramatically and, um, and, you know, bringing in Christy with her experience has been amazing to have another woman on the senior leadership team, even here at, at Channel, I was the only one. So, um, and I think, yes, what the monitor's done, the industry's done, and, and there's just some amazing women out there. And a lot of them I have not even met because my time at Great America, I really wasn't involved in the associations. I was, you know, just more running a sales team internally at, at, um, at Great America. So I'm super excited to be back in this space, going to the conferences. I just signed up for um, ELFA, the Women in Leasing 
Um, NIFA always has the women's luncheon. And yep. so and it, they're, they're amazing, talented, really smart women. So it's certainly exciting um, to see them grow and have the opportunities that they have. And then Christy, coming from an outside industry, I wasn't sure, was that a similar to, I guess, the advertising where you were in before? I, I mean, I would say there's, uh, generally, I would think a lot more women in the advertising, you know, dedicated industry, if you will. Um, so this was a shift. I mean, you can, you notice that there aren't as many women, let's say, um, you know, when you're going to different conferences or even in our office necessarily, and not by lack of, you know, not seeking them out. I think that more and more, you know, women being encouraged that this is a real um, industry of opportunity for them is important. But I think the work that I see, you know, in just my first year with the association, uh, especially like the recognition that's there for women, the opportunities for them to network and to um, learn from, you know, people like Cindy who've been, you know, here and kind of seen it all. Um, it's invaluable to people like me who are coming in new and, and kind of want to understand where everything's been and how can I be part of as we progress to the future, more seeing more um, women join us. And um, I think, you know, even just some of the people that you mentioned you've interviewed recently, you know, holding some really important roles in leadership and, and in the association is, is um, encouraging. At some point, you need to be purposeful in the hiring practices in regards to, okay, yep, no, we need, we need some different diversity in our thought processes here. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's very good. But, uh, I don't know. Um, oh, okay, so, <laughs> you know what? Um, it's not necessary. You know, <laughs> as, long as, you, as long as you can, as long as you have a good sense of humor, anyone can golf, right? Yes, yes. true. Yes. <laughs> I did um, sign up for the golf in, in Huntington Beach. Okay. So hopefully that your foursome has a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse, I hope you don't get stuck with me. <laughs> I, 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 if I get stuck with you, there's worse problems in the world, you know? And so when it'll be a Wednesday morning, we'll be golfing, having fun, and probably drinks earlier than we should. Yeah. But re regardless. Um, so I ask everyone who comes on here a little fun fact about themselves. Um, you don't mind me prying into your lives here well i'm gonna go first because no one will remember mine because mine's not that it's not that fun but <laughs> <laughs> um a lot of people just don't realize that i i was born and raised on a very small farm in south dakota and was a lived a sheltered life i mean i we had never traveled gone anywhere and um and so some days i'm even amazed at you know, the traveling I've done through my career and those things, which again, most people that's every day for them. But um, I was a very, um, I, I hate to say poor, but you know, we just, we were, when you grew up on a farm, you're, you're tied to the I, farm. You're, I understand. You're tied what were you, land. what was your, what were you farming? Well, I always told my, we actually raised pigs and huh? um, some beef cattle and then just small crop farmer. And, um, I always told my dad that the pig smelled horrible. <laughs> he said it was the smell of money. And when I when I when I left to go to college, I think he sold all the pigs and got rid of them. So I think he was just trying to annoy me. But <laughs> so I, well, I was more on the agriculture side of farming, and that's okay. how I grew up. So I understand where it's like you're not poor; you're you're a farmer. I don't know how to phrase yeah. it any better than that. Yep. So, yeah, it was a great life. Good work work yeah. ethic and and stuff so and we enjoy going back to the farm so it's good got it uh so fun fact for me i guess and on zoom you can't tell but i'm only five one uh so oh. people see me and they think this is always interesting that i was actually in the minnesota air national guard for six years oh. um so i've gone to basic training and i have low crawled for a mile um and i know how to shoot an m16 and all that kind of stuff so have fatigues with my name on them. Um, so that's kind of a fun fact about me, I would say. Uh, but a great experience. And um, again, taught, taught me a ton in terms of, you know, work ethic and, you know, pride in all that, all of those who serve for sure. So thank is that you. Right out, is that right out of high school? No, I actually went to, went into university for a couple of years and did that as a way to 
uh, pay off my student loans. And it was, I met some of the best people and I actually got work experience because I worked as part of the public affairs team. So okay. um, I think even if you Google my name, some articles from long ago, she'll still show up out there. Um, so. But yeah, so it, it was it, it really an invaluable experience for sure. No, and as Cindy already said it, thank you for your service on that one. Appreciate yes. that. Thank you. Uh, and then, um, and you both, you feel free. I would like both your answers on this one. Um, you know, why of all the people that do business, now you guys are unique because it's working capital and equipment finance now, as opposed to just one siloed. Um, but why do business with channel partners? Um, you know, I, you mean from a partner's perspective, why someone should work with us? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, like I mentioned, that's a little unique because there's not a lot of people that just do those two segments. But just right. why why channel? You know, um, I we're truly about our partners, right? I mean, that's what we, the conversations we have internally day in and day out is what do our partners need? How do we help them be successful? I mean, I that's how, and that's why I came back to channel was because that's how Brad Peterson taught me back in, you know, 1998 when he recruited me to sales um, is, is for us to be successful. It's all about our partners and, and we're exclusive to the partners, right? I mean, we're, we don't have a direct side. Everything is through the, the brokers and third-party equipment finance companies. And um, we're committed to how do we help them compete and win and keep their vendor relationships, keep their borrower relationships. And, and that's just really how we go to go to market is, um, and then being a single source that does offer to your point, Jesse, the, the working capital and equipment finance. And we, um, we just came out with a sync program we're launching um, where we offer extended credit equipment credit lines on our approvals, um, bundled approvals where we wrap in um, working capital we're doing Gateway for Success because um, working capital is still new to a lot of our partners where you can send an employee up to Minneapolis, which we'll, we won't do it till April when it's a little warmer, um, but they can come in and they get a week long of, um, of training on working capital. And we've got some case studies of how impactful that's been to our partners' businesses and in, in retaining their customers and driving um, bottom line profits. So, yeah. I think just the creativity that we're willing to bring forward and, you know, how we adapt products and services so that they best serve our partners. That's, I, I would say, a unique difference. It's really a relationship first um, mentality and, and approach, which, you know, so far it's been working. So, Well, that's perfect. And now um, I'm assuming, Christy, we'll start to see you at some of these conferences coming up. So you probably haven't really yeah. seen the true kind of equipment finance family outside of just some maybe regional events there. So I was lucky fun. enough to be uh, at the ELFA conference last October and I attended NEFA. So um, I got a glimpse, but I was still pretty new. So trying to kind of more observe. So, um, but I did just join the ELFA com communications committee. So excited to start to make some connections there and, and yeah. Yeah, big, big year for, for us and, and certainly for me to be learning more. And part of the SYNC program, I think one of the product offerings in that that our customers are most excited about is um, the marketing support we're going to give them. And Christy and her team have put together a lot of different tools in our toolkit to, to help our partners. And, and that's been the really great work of her and her team. And so people will get to take advantage of that too. Uh, there's definitely a, definitely a need for that. So another value add and, and a good job, Cindy, for, uh, for having that foresight of going out and securing uh, Christy as a resource for now in the future. So we're lucky to have her. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you ladies for your time today. Um, Cindy, I guess I'll be seeing you all when this airs, what, two weeks, two weeks after this airs. Yes. And then um, I'm assuming I'll probably be seeing you, Christy, on the next ELFA communications committee call. If not, uh, if you're not going to, you're going to be in April, are you going to be at the women's leadership group? I will be there in April. Yes. Okay. So and I will be seeing you both there. Sense. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks again, Jesse, for the yes. opportunity. No problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. See you later. Bye.